Hello everyone. Welcome to today's sections. My name is Kuo Chen Li. Today we are going to show you PHP web-based programming language. Functions, arrays, objects, and more. Functions, both ones built into PHP and ones you define yourself make coding much easier. They take away lots of hard work because you can reuse other people's code. And they allow you to keep your scripts shorter and easier to maintain. And beyond the basic data types, arrays and objects, which takes a little bit more work in order for you to take advantage of them properly. More importantly, arrays take a solid understanding of functions before you try to use them. Before PHP 5 came along, OOP support in PHP was quite frankly and more of a hack than a serious attempt. As a result, the few that used it often regretted the choice. And it is not surprising that the whole system got a few rewrites in PHP 5. It is now much more advanced and flexible and should please just about everyone. And we will first talk about how to use PHP to write functions, which can reuse your code and write your own functions. Then we will look at how to declare and manipulate arrays in PHP. Furthermore, we will discuss objects in PHP, how to design your own objects using PHP, and write your code with the object-oriented programming style. And last, not the least, we will show you how to send and handle data to your PHP file by the HTML forms. As PHP 5 includes more than 2,500 functions, you might assume it's very easy language indeed. But the truth is that each function needs to be used in different ways and so needs to be learned individually. In these sections, you will learn your first PHP function with the most helpful and easy first. To begin with, we are going to look at how to use PHP's building functions inside your scripts. As you need to be able to call functions before you need to bother learning how to write your own functions. Calling the functions in PHP can be as simple as printing the name of a function with two parentheses after it. And many functions take parameters, values that are used to affect the executions of the functions. Furthermore, nearly all functions have a return value the results of the functions. When you pass the parameters to a function, PHP actually takes a copy and uses the copy inside the functions. This means that variables you have passed into a function can be changed as often as you like inside the functions. 
and they will remain untouched outside the functions to change these behaviors. You can opt to pass the variables in as a reference, which works in the same ways as reference assigns. PHP passes the actual variables into the functions and any changes you make to that variables will still be there when the function exists as it. This script demonstrated the difference. The first line calls some function passing in a copy of four. The second passes in copies of four and bar. The third passes in a copy of four by the original bar. And the last passes in both the original four and bar. Passing by reference, as with bars in line three, and four and bars in line four, means that these variables can be changed inside the functions which is often used as a way for functions to return values. And you can give your functions whatever name you like. They follow the same guidelines without the dollar sign as PHP's variables. Note, though that you might not redefine PHP's built-in functions, the simple, simplest user functions in PHP look something like this. As you can see, you define your functions with the functions keyword, followed by the name of the functions, and two parentheses. The actual code your functions will execute lies between braces. In our example function for our solo line of code is returned one. And we will get onto that in a moment. After the function definitions, we can treat for like any other functions as seen in line four, where we print out the value it returns. And what value does it return? Well, unsurprisingly, a function returns its return values. And you can design your functions to accept parameters by modifying the definitions to include as many as you want. You need to give each parameter the name you will be using to refer to it inside the functions. When you later call that functions, PHP will rename the values to fit your function's definitions, like this. And after rerunning that script, my nums will be set to 50. The multiply functions could have been rewritten so that it was just one line. Return num1, num2. But it is good to show that you can make your own your functions as long as you want. And PHP has built-in support for arrays of data. And there are two ways you can create an array. Using the array functions or using a special character square brackets. Before we look at how arrays work, there are two key things you need to understand before you continue. An array is a normal PHP variable like any others. 
but it works like a container. And you can put other variables inside it. And each variable inside an array is called an element. And each element has a key and a value, which can be any other variable. Now, consider this PHP code. On line one, we see the most basic way to create an array, the array functions. The array functions takes a minimum of one para parameters and one maximum of as many as you want and returns an array containing those variables. Let's write, my array now contains all three variables. Line two contains a new function, count. That returns the number of elements consisting in the array passed to it as its only parameters. In the examples, we pass in my, my array, then store the number of elements, three, in the size. Line three contains another new function, print r. This takes just one parameter, but it outputs detailed information about a variable such as it is type, length, and contents. And in the case of arrays, print r iteratively outputs all elements inside the array. And it is a good way to see how arrays work. And the object-oriented programming has been around for many years now. Although the degree to which it is put varies widely across languages, C++, for example, is object-oriented C. And as some purists will say, implements more OOP functionalities than even Java does. And OOP was designed to allow programmers to more easily model their programs upon real-world scenarios. Consider an object of type dog as such and we have a blueprint for dogs from which all dogs are made. While dogs have different breeds that vary a great deal. At the end of the day, they all have four legs, a wet nose, and a dislike of cat and squirrels. So we have our dog blueprint from which we might create a poodle breed or a chihuahua breed. And each of these are also blueprints. But they are based upon the dog blueprint. From our poodle breed, we can then create a poodle. which we, we will call Poppy. And Poppy is an actual dog based upon the Budo pre, and therefore also based upon the dog blueprint. And we can create other Poodles simply by creating an instance of that breed. And as all dogs are able to bark, and we can add a bark functions to our dog blueprint. 
which in turn means that the poodle breed has a bark function and therefore puppy can bark too and we can also define variables inside a dog blueprint such as name, age, and friendliness and each object of type poodles will have its own set of variables its own name, its own age, etc. And let's get into the specifics. Given the class structures of dogs and breeds discussed above, it's time to take a look at how that translates into PHP code. And here is the PHP code necessary to define a very basic dog class. And HTML is a very simple markup language that offers its users a great deal of flexibility. While this might take it very easy to learn and write in, it makes the job of web browsers such as Internet Explorers and Mozilla much harder. They need to be able to cope with thousands of exemptions. The problem with HTML was that it became used to store style rather than just information. For example, designers will use HTML to spec specify the front of a piece of text as opposed to what that kind of text was with content and style so mixed inside HTML computers were not able to extract information about a document simply by reading through the HTML text used. A movement was started to redefine how web pages are designed so that HTML would contain only content information. And with the new language CSS cascading style sheet storing the style information. There were also some recommending that XML was the way forward for data. And that HTML could be eliminated altogether. While the XML argument made sense, many realized that there are simply too many HTML-based websites to be able to jump drop HTML. So the standard XHTML was born. A modification of HTML that makes it XML compliant. And all HTML attributes are surrounded by quotes and all HTML tags used in sections are closed either by using the open tag or using tag slash and these are two of the rules enforced in XHTML and we are at least going to look at creating HTML forms the primary means of sending data to PHP and creating and handling forms is one of the key skills of a PHP developers. So this section is particularly important. And you may want to read some parts more than once to make sure it all sinks in.
as you will likely need to know much of this on a regular basis. A phone on the web is considered to be zero or more phone elements plus a submit button. And these phones are designed to electronically replicate the forms we have all filled in hundreds of times before in real life. Sign up for a bank account, a passport, etc. You start your phone using the phone HTML tag. And therefore, you end with slash phone. By separating forms like this, you can have multiple forms on one page. And there are two key attributes to the phone tag that you should be aware of and use. Action and method. An action sets the location of the page that will handle the results of the form. The place where the variables should be sent. A method describes how the data should be submitted. And you have two options, get and post. We now have enough information to construct a working form. So we will start off with something fairly basic. Then afterwards put together a more complicated form that we can examine in depth. Here is the basic form shown in the slide. That will submit three variables to some form.php name, password, and age. And note how form variables are given names using the name attributes. The names you use here will be used in PHP script that receive the variables. And also notice that the default value of a field can be set using the value attributes which means that the name text box will be set to Jim by default. And in PHP, the predefined post variables is used to collect values in the form with method equal post. The post method transfers the information via HTTP headers. Information set from a form with the post method is invisible to others and has no limits on the amount of information to send. Here we use the request method. The predefined request variables contains the contents of both get, post, and cookie. The PHP request variables can be used to get the results from form data sent by both the get and post method. As mentioned already, forms are the primary ways of for user to send data to your scripts. So it is essential you get them right. Above and beyond the coding aspect of phones, there are a number of basic usability guidelines you should follow in your designs. And use tables to lay your elements out neatly. And this makes the phone easier to read. And it is also easier to report individual errors on field. If there is an error with a field, put a notice next to it and a message at the top. If you don't put the message at the top, P 
people will not realize there is an error. If, if you don't put the notice next to the problem field, people might not spot it amongst the others. A mark required field, either with a bold text or more commonly an asterisk. If your database had a field limit, put a size limit on a test box. This stops people from entering too much test and later finding out their data has been trimmed by your database. And don't make your phone too long. They confuse people and make them feel threatened. And if you spread your phone across page, let your visitors know how far they are through the process of phone submissions. For example, page two of five. This lets people know where they stand at all time. And without leaving them wondering, will this next button take money out of my bank account? Or are there more pages to come? And this is for today's section. Thank you.